Hi, Steph. Welcome to From the Stage Door. Hello. Sorry, I was gulping. I was trying to <laughs> unspecified content uh, for copyright purposes. <laughs> how are we doing? Are we good? Not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, yeah, how are we, how are we doing? I know it's like the same question you've asked me. Let's start off by just repeating. <laughs> <laughs> say now I'm going to be really childish and just say whatever you say. Okay, we'll do that. <laughs> First question. Have you always had a passion for theatre and performance? I can't stand it. I absolutely can't stand it. <laughs> um, I've got no choice. I can't do any. I genuinely can't do anything else. Uh, I've got no qualifications in anything other than uh, mucking around for a living. <laughs> and it's been a, a strange old journey. Um, this is my, yeah, my 26th year, I can't even say that, so we'll, I'm not, don't even drink, isn't that the trend? <laughs> oh, I am, without any sort of thing. Um, Matthew, I'm seeing my reflection of my eyes now, and I'm, I'm looking a little bit like, casual Jesus! <laughs> there we are. Yeah, uh, but yeah it, it's just always been what I've known. Uh, when I was six, my mother enrolled me, <laughs> after many different outlets to try and see what they could do with me, because um, I, I was just... I was a strange old child. Uh, in many ways, I would come down dressed as things I'd seen on TV, which is pretty normal, I think, for a lot of kids. Um, except I would like <laughs> break my parents' things or like like rip up my mother's like coat to make something that I'd seen or whatever. So yeah, it was quite disruptive. Channel uh, <laughs> those energies certainly, um, and I went to stagecoach, which was great, and I got my first uh, role in a film when I was in stagecoach. Um, it was all brand new to us, and it was filmed in in Wales, and it was a, f a film with. Oh, I think uh, they're not. That was you. That was you. <laughs> listening. It's all. It's all the five G wizards listening. With it. <laughs> I'm not allowed to talk about that film, uh, apparently. So unfortunately, uh, oh, they're coming for me. They're coming for me. Oh, no. <laughs> but yeah, so that was with Ron Moody, uh, which uh, I was a little bit obsessed with Ron Moody when I was younger because um, I have. No surprises to anybody watching this. High functioning autism. <laughs> right? So my brain was just everywhere. And the only thing I would sit and watch would be these old fashioned movies. So I was sort of schooled and brought up on Danny Kay and uh, the Marx Brothers and the Jolson films, Jolson story and Jolson sings again. Um, and everything I've kind of done in my career in some strange sort of pattern has come back to things that I was once introduced to in my childhood. Um, loads of, of strange coincidences along the career. And I seem to be kind of bringing it back, bringing lots of old memories back. And certainly in the last couple of years, uh, the roles I've played as an actor, have been sort of nods to the childhood. Even like even like working with Canon and Ball in Panto, mm -hmm. like they were idols of mine as a child. And then here I am going, am I unfaking it? I don't quite know how, how what you mean. <laughs> Like, surely not. Go on, I feel bad. Give the role to somebody else. But, <laughs> yeah, it's been a very, very strange career. I've kind of, I've kind of ticked a lot of boxes and done a lot of things. Um, and it's, in one way, it's great. In another way, it must look like to many people who want to employ me as um, like a jack of all trades, master of none. But without being big headed, you know, I've mastered some. And uh, yeah, I just kind of enjoy having loads of projects going on at the same time and putting my energy out there. And I love collaborating with people. That's my favorite thing. Um, I collaborate now on many writing projects for comedians and comedy shows, pilots, pitching, uh, left, right, and center. Um, and I I work, I, I teach, you know, I teach drama uh, to, to children and adults. Um, I mentor in magic. I do loads of different things now that are linked to the other day job, which is performing myself, whether it's in films, TV, stage, panels, and I still, I, I'm even, even I go, what? How? how? <laughs> like, yeah. I sleep and that's how it normally happens. No, I'm not. I, I kind of, it ties a little bit. I'm not very good, but that's kind of on the list somewhere as well. So yeah, I've kind of done it all. Magic, comedy. I've run comedy clubs. I've been an entertainment manager at a holiday park. I was the youngest ever Butlins Red Court at just 13. So that's crazy. Um, yeah. But in a very, very strange way, like a Tasmanian devil, things just happen around me and I kind of go, oh, okay, I'll try that. And then I end up being okay enough that people go, oh, we'll employ him again. So yeah, I left school at 13, 
I have uh, no GCSEs, I've got no A-levels, and all I genuinely know is entertaining, being art arty, being creative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry for that long-winded, <laughs> but I think that kind of covers I think all you kind of covered it, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. So you mentioned your first job was with Ron Moody, but what was your first theatre job? Ooh, um, I did loads of Amdram as a child. Uh, I was involved in uh, various youth theatres as well. Um, and I loved, I loved that. Uh, it, it, it was a very strange situation to be in because at, at age 14, I got signed to MTH Haller to a very, very reputable agency. Um, they've got actors in their books, you know, on TV and in shows in America and in the UK. They're very, very um, well-known agency. And they took me on at 14. Um, which I didn't realize the privilege that was maybe at the time and the responsibility of that. All my kind of friends and peers, I, I went to college at 13. It's, it sounds made up, doesn't it? Everything I said. <laughs> so I don't even think my name's Stefan. I, <laughs> I think that's, I'm, maybe I'm on the witness protection program. And nobody, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, so I, I ended up going to college at that time, everybody in my class was slightly older. Um, and then everybody kind of went on to, to another college or a uni while I was on TV. So I was in a, in a so-called Nuts and Bolts. I only had a small character, but he was a, a series regular for uh, series three. Mm -hmm. um, and then, then I was having adverts and various other opportunities um, with this new agent. And I just didn't realize at the time what a privilege that is to be in a position of having an audition like twice, three times a week, going back and forth London, um, when now the industry is blown to smithereens currently, mor morally and in every other kind of sense, because every time we feel like we're building things back up, mm -hmm. suddenly it's like, oh no, we'll just leave it a little bit further. Okay, that's fine. We've sorted this out our end. Like I've had to do so many different, um, you know, emails back and forth, um uh, what's the word i'm looking insure uh, what's the insurance thing my brain has gone uh the what's it, what's it called when you uh oh, this is great cut this out <laughs> so it not uh sounds like <laughs> hang on now so we can turn this into a quick it's interactive now right <laughs> yeah. assessments risk assessments that's what i meant okay uh, <laughs> would you trust me with anything <laughs> I mean, can you believe that I'm allowed to, to use lasers and fire and blades? And <laughs> well. Madness. But, uh, yeah, so it's it's a very, very strange time in the industry. I'm very lucky that I'm able to diverse my uh, be diverse with my, my skills. Um, I'm also trained as a clown um, and worked as a clown, uh, children's entertainer, I've done all of that. Um, yeah. What was the question? <laughs> Your first theatre job. Well, first theatre job. Um, I think you've covered like all bases, but you know. <laughs> you have to excuse me. I'm like a, a parakeet, right? Whenever I see my reflection, because I'm looking at obviously the screens now, <laughs> I, my brain can only go boo. That's what's happening. <laughs> I'm in my own hat right now, so my brain's going. You shouldn't have worn that hat. Look at you, malnourished Keanu Reeves. Look. <laughs> and uh, Harpo Marx. There he is, boys. <laughs> but. Uh, my first proper theatre job, I was performing magic um, in theatres and small comedy clubs and uh, sort of theatresque cafes um, all through my teens. And I I was in a strange position where I was getting paid to do loads of corporate events, um, even like Freemason halls. And then suddenly uh, for advertising companies like Coke um, or like the Harrods Christmas party um, as this teenager performing magic. And um, I got opportunities in London to kind of go on in the West End a couple of times in various um, sort of variety shows. And I, and I really sort of built up my skills as a sort of variety entertainer, first and foremost, um, very much influenced by all of the greats, um, because everything today is a version of yes. the daily, we're squash, we're comedy squash <laughs> or light entertainment squash, uh, Rabina Toothkind, that's what we are. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's just, it's great to see and how it evolves. And now with technology, obviously, I always joke on my social media how much I hate TikTok and people mind it. But um, without them knowing or realizing, you know, they're, they're still copying 
things that have gone decades back and de- decades decades back. People, I know you said dickheads back. They cra- <laughs> I slip reversed it. Remember that song? What a reference! And <laughs> there we are. So, um, <laughs> question what, on being on stage. Do you, do you mean as an actor? <laughs> just just yeah. sweeping it, whatever. <laughs> um, I think my first, uh, one of my fondest first jobs doing doing something new on stage was as the comic for Imagine Theatre in their pactos. Um And I did several years at Porth Call, and it, it was absolutely great. Uh, just an absolute blast. And what a treat to be that young. I think I was tw- 21 uh, the first year that I did it. And being allowed to put up my own material in the show and a couple of prop gags and just getting to feel that. I, I felt like all of the idols of my past. Um, like I could kind of feel like, oh, this must be like a speck of sand of what they experienced. And it was a lovely, lovely feeling. And yeah, I think my, my love for comedy after that age just grew and grew and grew. Uh, me and my friend Simon Emmanuel, a very good comedian from Wales, um, we started managing comedy clubs together. We started running comedy nights. Uh, there was a comedian in Wales called uh, Paul Allen uh, who had a song called I Mush that was out. It was a very popular song. Um, and he was running a comedy club. We then took that over um, and started booking acts like Russell Kane, Paul Foot, um, and Milton Jones and stuff. And we it just like this crazy little comedy scene started happening and um, a fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> it's like the Da Vinci Code. Try me. <laughs> a fantastic actress uh, named Caroline Berry. Uh, she was running a comedy club as well. There was a lovely little unit of comedy, um, and then suddenly it just grew and grew and grew. So, like the South Wales, the Cardiff comedy, um, it just really exploded. Uh, it's so great to see, and there's so many talented people on the on the Welsh comedy scene uh, coming through too. Um, so yeah, it's. It's been, what was the question? <laughs> I think it's in there somewhere, don't worry. <laughs> I look like Snoop Doggy Dog. Yeah. Okay, moving yeah. on. Um, so. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, who was your greatest influence growing up? Uh, performer wise or? Just generally, as you were growing up. My biggest influence uh, was my granddad. Uh, Bill, he was absolutely wonderful. He introduced me to things like the Jolson movies and just a, a, a beautiful soul. He, he he used to sing like the, the church songs. He had a wonderful, wonderful voice. He had a proper sort of Harry Seacombe type voice. Um, and yeah, he was just a very, very humble man, a very honest man. Last of the true gentlemen, I call him, because he always used to tip his cap. Uh, even in his 80s, you know, he took, good morning, good morning. And yeah, just a beautiful, beautiful man. And um, all the amount of support that he, he gave me, he'd he'd buy me all my magic tricks when it started off as well. So, um, and that's a bit of a cliche, you know, I feel, because uh, I know like Dynamo and a few others, their granddads, we should, we should just have a granddad off. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, no, it's lovely. What a, what a thing to share. My father used to come to the South Wales Magic Society with me. So every other Sunday of the month, he'd come with me to that. So we had a really great bond through magic as well. Um, my father never did magic, but he liked going down for the chat. So he'd chat to all the other magicians and it was great, the, the group of us. Um, so yeah, my granddad definitely. Um, performing wise, uh, like all, the greats have to be for me, Danny Kay, just as a complete all rounder. He was effortlessly funny. Um, when he sang, it was effortless. When he danced, it was effortless. I'm not a very good dancer, um, but I try. And uh, just what an incredible array of talent just to look back on and go, wow, you know, if that kind of, per- but weirdly, if that kind of person was around today, you know, I, I still feel like they'd be overshadowed by these videos of, of what a trend in for three seconds of people in mind and stuff. It's strange. Mm. Uh, and it's not a bitter thing. I'm like, I'm, I'm very lucky that like, I, I've worked, I worked all through last year and I do loads of different things. I, I, if anything on social media, I like to, I like to have a bit of fun. So I post things that make me laugh. I, um, you know, I, I made a character years ago called Donovan, the worst comedian in Wales. Mm-hmm. And we were trying out new material and I've always loved character comedy. Even looking back at Charlie Chaplin when he used to age up as well, you know, all of the greats and character comedy. And um, so I performed this character and it went down well. 
And I, I got quite annoyed that it went down well. So I used to just try and go out there and die on purpose. So I would just make it really awkward. And I did have about 11 years in between other, other stuff to dig in randomly uh, different places. And one time, um, a dear friend of mine from the, the amateur days, uh, Caroline Mins, uh, she had her, her 50th birthday. And we were all told that we we're going to perform of some, some degree um, and you all had to wear black tie. It was all black tie. And I was like, oh, the character, I don't think it's going to work if it's, if it's me. Um, because, you know, he's got this ridiculous, it started off quite normal looking, but then I, I had like a big, big mullet, big glasses, used to have a nose bleed. Um, he, he had like this cowboy jacket on, just ridiculous. It became ridiculous. You know, like bow selector size glasses. <laughs> yeah. The full works, just ridiculous. And um, anyway, I say to the host, my friend Dean, I say, look, because there's people here I don't know. They don't know me. They've never seen it. It's only a local thing. Um, will you will you just explain and say, look, it, it's an act. It, it, you know, it's a, it's a character comedy. Please welcome Donovan. Yeah, yeah, nobody's buddy. <laughs> then comes to my bit. Please welcome the hilarious, the fantastic. Oh, he's so this guy. That means oh, I'm crying thinking about his last joke now. He's literally give me the biggest build up ever <laughs> and i go out there and <laughs> I, I i i had i had so much fun whilst dying on my ass like, and it was great it was great because they were horrified and people that i know um who were like really close friends of mine like looking at me as if i'd like shot on their dog um it was just a strange moment um but yeah, it, I love things like that. So I've played with that a lot. And I've got a character called Gwyn, Gwyn Jones, uh, who started off as a comedy registrar. I used to have a company where I'd marry couples as a as a brand new script. Uh, you know, I'd get all their facts. I suppose kind of like the video messages do now with, with the different celebrities and stuff. Um, you'd ask them for a couple of facts and I'd make a bespoke wedding script and marry them. Uh, so I, as you do, always doing something random. Where's Stefan? Is he on the moon? Yeah, probably. Is, yeah. yeah, he'll be back in a minute. He's got Pilates class at three. So, yeah, I just would do random things. And um, I married a couple as Jack Sparrow once. That was great fun. Um, that was awesome. So, yeah, I, I write wedding scripts for people as well and, and various other stuff. Where was I going with this? Is anybody still watching me? <laughs> I'm still listening. That's all that matters. Because I feel bad because it's your show. I've come on you. Who does he think he is? Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> so far. Oh, there he is. But yeah, I apologise to everybody. Uh, I will get to the point if somebody reminds me of it. Uh, greatest influence, but we got that, I think. Oh, there we are. Well, uh, <laughs> you tick the box. It's fine. It's fine. Hey! <laughs> so, yeah. thinking of your greatest influence, what's the best piece of advice that you've ever received? Ooh. I had quite a lot of advice of, of Bobby Ball. I was very, very privileged uh, to, ha to have a friendship with Bobby. Um, and he, <laughs> he was great. Like talk about an icon and like, and getting to work with him and hear these stories. It was just the most surreal experience. All of these greats that I loved and adored, like Freddie Starr, um, you know, Brian Connolly, all, all of the greats. He was casually chatting about this time when, and I, I was just sat there like, oh, tell me more, Grandad, tell me more. It was the best thing ever. Um, and I got a chance to, <laughs> oh, this is great. So Bobby's a right character. So uh, Bobby's a total professional, but it's, it's Bobby's way. And to, to be fair, it's like 60 years in show business, like <laughs> full respect. And um, I, I was playing Captain Hook. And uh, I come on in the throne, etc. We're having we're having fun, and Bobby's just winding me up the entire time. He, he winds me up so much, in fact, that when we started doing a plank routine, he he started like hitting me properly, really hard. <laughs> it was just it was great because I really felt I felt like I was like Bruce Forsyth to like Norman Wisdom or something. It was amazing. Um, and he would stand in the wings and he'd champion me on uh, for the for the note at the end, like go, going up singing my way. He'd be like, go on, son, smash it. Hey, go on, smash it. Just beautiful, man. Um, and obviously we, we lost him recently. So that's, uh, yeah, that what a, what a privilege it was to, uh, to you know, to, to have a friendship with, with uh, one of the greats, one of the all-time greats. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So which theatre is your favourite to perform in? 
Oh, I've, I've performed, I've been lucky enough to perform in a, a lot of different theatres. I have to say the Swansea Grand Theatre, my hometown theatre, it's, I basically live there. Well, not at the moment. Um, so yeah. left. All right, I've not left the house today. <laughs> um, but no, uh, yeah, the Swansea Grand Theatre, I've performed there as a child. Uh, I've performed in charity shows. I've hosted, uh, you know, shows there. I've appeared in pantomimes, plays as a comedian. Um, yeah, it's just home. And uh, But yeah, so the Grand is a very, very, very special place. Uh, really special place. Brilliant. So what has been your most challenging role to date? Ooh. Um, oh, I've got, I've got some coming up that I can't talk about, which is very annoying. But <laughs> the, this one play that is coming up, um, which is in the works, obviously, you know, as long as everything goes goes according to plan, uh, I'll be playing five different characters, uh, all quite different, and uh, yeah, that will be that would probably be the most challenging. Um, I really enjoyed playing Dan in Night Must Fall, mm -hmm. and that was a really great experience. Flew well in theatre company, uh, based at the Swansea Grand Theatre as well. Um, they're just incredible, and I've been lucky enough to do everything from Brecht to Shakespeare with them. Uh, Peter and Claire Richards are phenomenal. Um, and yeah, they just really gave me this treat of a role. Um, Dan in Night Must Fall, and I got to just fall back in love with, with acting. I'm very much a character actor, so I, I'm a chameleon. I like to change completely um, into whatever role it is. And getting to be nasty and not in a villain in a pantomime way, yeah. Um, and getting to play all those undertones and find those little treats. And yeah, that's, for me, that role there was a, personally, I got a lot of real, real load out of that. Um, and playing the Invisible Man uh, as well on tour um, with my, my friends, Julian and James, that was incredible. And um, oh, there's so many stories. I don't think I can repeat some of the stories on <laughs> Uh, but we'd all double up. So I'd play the Invisible Man. I'd play, I think I played three policemen. Um, I played, um, no, no, I never played the woman. I think James played the woman. I can't remember now. Uh, <laughs> there were so many different accents and different roles. That was a lot of fun. I, I'm tending to do that a lot now, uh, strangely, uh, play more than one character in plays, uh, which is fun. And it's great because that challenges me. And that's certainly where my interests lie. Um, I approach everything stand up. It's always from the point of view of a character. Whether I, I love as well on social media when everybody thinks that you've made things specifically for them. So I often get comments that I'm like, oh, should I delete it? Oh, do I care? No. <laughs> so it's just, you know, this was, uh, I don't know why you're bothering doing this character again. I'm like, oh, okay. Thank you for that. I'll, I'll make sure <laughs> change my plans just for you. Uh, yeah, just character, character in general. I just enjoy it. I just enjoy it. Um, yeah, the platform to just completely make something, like mould something from scratch. And what would you say has been your favourite role? That you've played? Oh, definitely the Jolson play. Um, that was just incredible. And the story behind that is my grandfather uh, and myself, as I, as I said, loved the two Jolson films and Larry Parks. And he always used to say to me, because we never had a chance to see Brian Connolly together in, in London when, when it was on in town, and he always used to say to me, that's the role I want to see you play. That's the, that's the role, Jolson, right? Jolson, come on. <laughs> I'd be like 10 at the time. I'd be like, right, okay. Is it <laughs> yet? I don't know. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, he just did the music and I used to, try, used to just try and emulate his voice, even at that age. Um, just, yeah, just, ah, just trying to find those lower notes. And my voice luckily broke quite early. I had like a mustache when I was six. <laughs> and yeah, so I just I I just got the sort of the range for Johnson now, um, sort of locked away. Uh, but getting to play the story of Larry Parks, um, the man who played Johnson, obviously in the two films, and how his life um, was completely robbed away from him. He's the he's the true uh, once upon a time in Hollywood story because here's this guy who was Oscar nominated um, for Columbia Pictures. You know, he was one of their rising stars. And then suddenly the Mac McCarthy is, and uh, he was accused of being a communist. He went to trial and his, his life was just taken away from him, from him because of that time period. Um, and it tells the story of all of that. 
Um, it tells the story of him meeting Jolson, how Jolson didn't like him. Um, so I get to play Larry, I get to play Jolson, and I get to play Jolson as Larry. Mm-hmm. Um, I play, I think, two females briefly. I play, um, I play, I think, another three or four characters mm-hmm. um, so, as well. So that was so much fun. So yeah, playing these characters, multi-character roles, I'm really enjoying that. If that was even your question, it's been so long. <laughs> Surprisingly, you did answer the question. I'll go for a walk, I'll take up rambling. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <I'll hold> <laughs> How do you deal with nerves when you're performing? Strangely, I don't I don't get nerves a- anymore performing on stage. On stage is the most comfortable, mm-hmm. comfortable, comfortable, whichever one you decide to keep. Um, yes, I will. Thanks, Carol. <laughs> it's Riley now, isn't it? I don't even know. I don't even watch it. Why have I gone down this cul de sac of comedy? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. What was I saying? I've done it again. Nerves. Nerves. Oh, nerves. Uh, yeah, I don't get nerves anymore for stage stuff. For filming, I do. Mm-hmm. Um, mainly when I'm a creative behind the, the scenes and um i just want it to look right i just want to get that vision realized that's in my head yeah. um but on, on stage in the wings i might i might occasionally need the, the cliched wee wee oh no i should have gone um but yeah i just love just just that presence of an audience that that calm and you get to conduct it and that's back to the danny k thing as well just having the audience in the palm of your hand and being able to just, just play them like an orchestra, bring them with you on a journey of emotion if it's a, a sad play, or you know, shock them, make them feel empathy, and then, ha, collectively, like a blanket, everything changes. Mm-hmm. Or how people react differently to comedy, um, and how you could play a comedy uh, club and play do the same material somewhere else and it won't go down as well. Yeah. Um, or having to play the room as it's dealt and change your material, knowing how to just improvise and change. I teach this a lot too, I teach a lot of workshops. And it's just being able to adapt your material in the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Cool. Is that your question? It was. <laughs> it Yay, what did I win? So, you won another question. So, <laughs> what would be your dream role or dream show to do that you haven't done yet? Oh, wow. Um, there, is, there is somebody who I'd love to play, um, which may, may be involved in this play that is coming up. Right. So I can't say too much about that, I think, at the moment. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, that person has, has been a fascination with me uh, since I was very young. As I said, I, I also became a clown. I worked for Chunky Rustle Circus as well. Um, they did some stuff at Down Folly Farm. He sold me my first magic illusion and they coached me in magic. I, I found myself with all these wonderful, crazy, crazy situations of people. Um, Butlins came about because I got I got severely bullied through school. I had a hot, horrific time from, from nursery. Uh, I was a late developer. They didn't know I had the difficulties I've got, so they just plunked me then in a, in a disabled class uh, when I was in year seven or year eight. Um, and yeah, I got bullied all the way through that and sort of magic and art and the, the other world of creating characters, the sort of masks, I suppose, mm-hmm. um, like babushka dolls, the, the two p- person's identity um or allowing people to see a certain version of you as a character which they can oh i didn't think you were that confident i love that and when you encourage somebody at a comedy club um or somebody at an open mic night to get up and all their friends are surprised yeah. and it's just a beautiful moment it, it's just it's great um you know to see people push themselves what was your question my dog <laughs> i feel like i need little cards to hold up to you. It's ridiculous isn't it your dream roles that you haven't done yet so that there's this that person um i want to play danny k he's a big 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 one i'm gonna have a little drink my mouth's gonna turn <laughs> um yeah so danny k is a, is a huge one that's on my list uh to play um other roles when i was younger um i saw joseph and his technical dream court when i was five at the Palladium, and I remember it so vividly, and uh, that kind of st- struck chords with, with me, and it was very, very visual, and I liked the Pharaoh, so the Pharaoh was the character I wanted yeah. to play, and I think my mum even made me and my brother costumes, <laughs> the Joseph coat, mm-hmm. uh, and my brother 
the feral costume, but I think I nicked his feral costume because I wanted to be like Elvis, but my brother was obsessed with Elvis. So yeah, uh, there was that role. Um, I wanted to play, if I had if I had the confidence of vocal ability and the training and the time to train, uh, emotionally, I would like to play the character of Jean Valjean just to play the acting side of it. Mm-hmm. If they do a stage play without any of the high, high, high notes, I can I can do a pretty mean falsetto. It's just that little bit I can't yeah. do. Um, yeah, so if, if it was ever a, another adaptation of Les Mis, um, as a Les Mis, Mis Adorables, uh, <laughs> hey, listen, I left school at 13, all I remember is, is um, Je m'appelle Stefan, there you are, <laughs> Je m'appelle Stefan, uh, Je bite à Pédigal, <laughs> there's a boy in my class who would go, Kill our Jato, he was, he was from the Swans, I don't know why he used to do it like that. <laughs> Um, and just somebody used to go, those on. So that's all I remember. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> so, what advice? What advice would you give to your younger self? Don't do that in the sink because they're coming back from Tesco. <laughs> no, no, that's not a thing. No. Uh, <laughs> imagine they watch this. That never happened, by the way. Uh, <laughs> what would I give myself? That everything's going to be okay, and. In 2020, 2021, people are starting to accept people for who they really are um, and just be yourself. Um, yeah, I suppose I've hidden behind lots of different characters over the years as corporate devices, I suppose we'll do. Um, and yeah, just that it's okay just to be weird. It's okay <laughs> to be different. Um, yeah. yeah, that would be, and, and I like was something that I've always, not that I need to tell myself because this has always been the case. I've only ever been in competition with myself. Like I don't, you know, I, I, I've i never understood people who are bitter and jealous over, over like other people's success, especially in a time like this. Um, so I tend to make a lot of work for other people and I, I, I like to collab and do stuff for, for other people to kind of push push them. Um, but yeah, I, I just, what was I saying? Advice for your younger self. Oh, it would be to um, bring a, pa- a, pan, a pen and paper and a pen. <laughs> Paper, um, because you know you might get hungry in the night, and there must be a YouTube video where you can you know get the pulp. <laughs> um, on the ledge, you could probably make a sort of souffle. <laughs> what you need for a souffle? You need soup uh, and and some souffle. And I, I've gone neither. So um, let's talk about this little cup. That's a tiny cup. That. How do you feel about this? <laughs> How do you feel about this cup? Be honest. I, I feel like it needs, you know, that magic trick with the, the balls, <laughs> little red balls. In fact, I think it is even from that. Because <laughs> that's how good I am. So, <laughs> have I shown you my Houdini key ring? No. Let's go. <laughs> what were you saying? Next question. <laughs> So what has been the funniest thing that's happened to you on stage? Oh, wow. There's been a few. Um, I I think Vern might have told some of these stories. Um, already. He told me one, but not on camera. Oh, OK. OK. So was it involving the giant? No, this was involving, um, I think it was food poisoning. Oh, yeah, food poisoning. Now this, the show must go on. <laughs> I literally turned up to do the job and suddenly this horrible watery feeling started to rise. Um, and yeah, I had, is it gastronomic itis? Something like that, yeah. Oh, no, it was coming up both ends, not that you need to know. <laughs> nice. See what happens. And uh, yeah, I was so ill, but luckily I like managed to get into my costume. It did warm up. They were like, are you right? I was like, yeah, yeah, be fine, be fine, be fine. And then <laughs> the problem is that the character I used to do in Porth Call, uh, his... I used to be really squeaky, so it'd be like, "Hey, you boys and girls, you're right though, yeah, not too bad, see, because and he, and like, well, it would vary, but it would always be always be up there, and of course, when you're feeling sick and you're doing that, it's not going to help. So every couple of minutes, I go, "One second, I'll be back now," <laughs> and then I go up and you just, I <laughs> God love him as the dame, just to just completely make up like half a song because I. <laughs> Um, and my poor dad, one of the chaperones at the time, coming on as a cow like that because they had to, they didn't know what to do. So they were like, go, go, go. my dad's not knowing what's going on. Oh, it was amazing. Good times. Good 
Um, uh, the, the giant, not the same production, but the uh, the giant <laughs> fell into the band pit once, and they had an apron <laughs> in the fourth goal. So like you had, um, it's not like the Great British Bake Off. They had this, sort of, <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah, so it's kind of like that. Mm-hmm. And the, the band are there, and we're under the table hiding from this giant, and there's this big, big and like giant's booming voice saying something like. Jack Trot, I am so high and mighty, you are so small. And by the time we look back up, the giant is upside down. In, it's like something off, it's a knockout. <laughs> Crotches with his leg in the air, like something like this giant. And you've got all of these da- tap dancing cockroaches trying to lift the giant <laughs> off the drummer. And I used to have a catchphrase in Porth Call, which was, well, there was two. There was, get involved. And the second one was, it's awkward now, isn't it? And <laughs> The drummer, Ray, perfectly timed. As soon as the giant came back, he just shouted from the band pit, Oh, but now we're It was great. <laughs> Absolutely great. But, um, yeah, they are two very funny, funny moments. Um, yeah, there's been other, there's other things. Um, doing stand-up, it's always different. I, I'm very much, I improvise with the crowd. Or if I'm emceeing and hosting stuff, that's a lot of improv. Um, and most of the magic shows I do are improv as well. So lots of stuff. I'm really lucky that I've always had really good audiences uh, who want to get involved and, and love a bit of craziness. Um, and yeah, and don't take themselves too serious. It's uh, it's been fun. Cool, cool. So um, just a little bit on this before, but what's been your most surreal moment when performing? Like your pinch me moment? Yeah, oh, so it's like proper surreal moments. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, for me, definitely... This, well, back to back to Jolson, seeing my daughter in the front row uh, doing a play that was in tribute to my granddad and playing Jolson, it was a, that was a very strange, um, strange, strange feeling. And it was it was really beautiful. Um, but like working like with people like Bobby and Tommy um, or the stand ups that I've been on corporate bills with and have gone, ooh. Are you sure? And it's just this, it's this strange thing I've got to get over um, because I, I, I graft a lot. So it's, I, I'm constantly working on stuff. So I know that I haven't like cheated my place here, but I still feel <laughs> apologetic. Like sometimes I'll have like two hours sleep a night because I'm doing various stuff. But I genuinely do feel like I've always won the lottery. I can't believe that this is, this is what I get to do. And I'm, I'm very, very lucky that people have wanted to see me in, in various guises and i've got some wonderful fans um hello lynn my number one fan <laughs> uh so yeah i'm very very lucky um that people have yeah, just wanted to see more of me i know quite now i now it might be quite annoying um uh, but when i'm focused <laughs> people like working with me it's all right it's all good <laughs> <laughs> So, from your projects and shows that you've done, have you ever taken any props or costumes home with you? Oh, I don't know to say. I have, that's a yes, then, isn't it? Dobbing <laughs> yeah. That's, a, that's a, the worst dobbing yourself in ever. I'm like, you're, not, you're not the only person that's done that. Like, three or four people have done that. I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to tell anyone. <laughs> um, one, of the, well, one, of the, one of the first times I stole off set uh, was on Casualty, actually, uh, when I was 14. And there was glass, different glass, um, there was a scene in a car and they had put the various different glass. So you had like the, the gelatine one, which splintered. And then you had like the waxy one, like sugar glassy type stuff. Um, so yeah, I think, I think my mum was chaperoning that, that and she was like, um, oh, it, it's right. We, we, you know, take a photo and I go, you can take this if you want. And it was like my fake scar that they just stitched up. Um, yeah. And then I, I got some glass off a prop man. I was like, can I have some? You shouldn't really, but uh, I've still got that glass. Yeah. Got to be done. Got to be done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, you've got a menagerie of characters that you do. Yeah. Um, my favourites being Captain Jack or the Grinch. We should say the Grinch for copyright purposes. <laughs> <laughs> so which is your favourite to perform? Oh, they're both so much fun because they're both totally improved. Um, I've been very lucky in that department too where I've sort of created bespoke entertainment for our corporate events or, or weddings, etc., as as recognizable characters, but completely brand new material and just, all just improvised as me being cheeky. Um, and that in itself is a, is a privilege. You know, you're using somebody, <laughs> you're using somebody else's image, um, but they, they're they getting the credit. So it's quite nice, actually, to, to sort of like, oh. Um, Jack Sparrow is very, very cheeky. 
the Grinch, you can get away with a lot of being just mean to people, obviously, naturally. Uh, when I, I put together a little production over Christmas time, so I did the Grinch tribute UK, or the Grunch, as we, as we said. <laughs> and that took me about four months to make. So I made, I made the costume. Um, I did have help of a, a lovely lady called um, Annika, and she did some of the red stuff for me. But all the green stuff you see, all mm. like you know, the mask and all the hair and all that and the gloves, I, I made myself. Mm. And um, yeah, it was that was a lot of fun because I'd always wanted to do something with the Grinch. I've always imitated Jim Carrey. Um, in fact, back to my uh, youth days mm-hmm. in the Sahajika Youth uh, Trust, we did a production of Honk, and. Uh, the brief was, he's an over-the-top character. He's a villain. <laughs> so my brain goes, what would Jim Carrey do if he got the role? <laughs> so I just played it as if of what I thought he would think if he was that villain at that time. But it was like, I, I put in like, screw copyright. I put in loads of references. It was an Am Jam production. Am, Am Jam production? What is wrong with my mouth? <laughs> I might need a ventriloquist mask. That's what I might need and somebody else working it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, like, oh, dear me. What was I saying? Um, yeah. <laughs> it's catching. You are now, you've now got Pejek. That's what you've got. You've got Pejek, unfortunately. Um, you don't get the hat. I get to keep that because I look like uh, a Sharpie. Okay. Um, um, punk. Honk, okay. yeah. Sorry, I thought, I thought it was in your way. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that, I just decided to do with Jim Carrey. I sprayed my hair up black, like the Ace Ventura quiff. Uh, I made uh, like this fishtail thing. I got my mum to make something else. My mum has been amazing, by the way. Like an absolute, the, I, can't, I can't even say the word absolute, an absolute darling all the way through. She's been amazing. And um, yeah, I, I played it as every sort of Jim Carrey film that I could connect to it. Um, and I like doing that, threading existing characters with new work. Um, I find that really fun. And uh, yeah, there's some videos online on YouTube of me uh, doing that, doing that basically. Um, and The Grinch, got, I got away with that a lot. Um, my, my daughter was fantastic. She performed the Cindy Lou Who, and we'd go around doorstep doing a socially distant show and we'd mess their gardens up we'd spray stuff basically there was a new virus going around called the humbugs it's my job as a covid safety officer type thing um to knock on their door and check everybody's abiding by the rules i just thought with everything the thing that's doom and gloom children need some magic you know they're not dull they know what's going on around the world um let's just address it through the grinch and just have some fun at christmas so They'd, they'd have this giant swab that checked it, and then if it had green stuff on it, we had to spray them with like silly string to make sure they were at, like anti back type thing. Um, and all these flashes going off. There was a self isolation tent and stuff. It was great fun. Uh, chucked snowballs at everybody, messed the garden up, green toilet paper everywhere. Um, and yeah, it really made a lot of people smile and laugh. But I was also doing these bespoke videos as well. So people would contact me and they tell me some information and then I'd make uh, jokes, basically. I'd write a joke for each bit of information they gave me and I'd put a little video together. So I did quite a lot of them this year as well. And I did Quiffmas, which was fun, which was um, a Northern comic with a little nod to Bobby in, in places um, who would then morph into Elvis Presley for the Elvis Presley Christmas songbook and some Cliff Richard or Quiff Richard. <laughs> um, but Jack, with Jack, I've been doing him longer. Um, and I did a pantomime with Jack in 2008 as Flapjack Sparrow. <laughs> so it was the captain of the Saucy Sioux, I think that was, that was the one, in Robinson Crusoe for the Friendship Theatre Company. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so that was cool. So I, I first started trying him out there. Um, there was auditions for the, where they put out the casting for the Young Jack Sparrow Adventures, which was going to be based on the books. Mm-hmm. And they were auditioning various different people as this young Jack Sparrow. Um, it never went ahead, but I was in the in the lineup or, or running for that. So I was like, oh, Jack Sparrow, cool. I was quite young at the time. I must have been about 17, 18, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I thought I'll dress up this Halloween as Jack Sparrow. And people were like, oh my God, you look a little bit like him. Like, don't be silly. <laughs> Wearing the most ridiculous costume, like my mum's jacket or something, right? <laughs> 
land. It's freezing. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> so I put the put the jacket on and just try and make it look piratey, just by a long wig. And the first costume was awful. Uh, and then I started making the wig. And then, yeah, I've made like a replica, a full replica of the last movie, the wig, the lot. Mm-hmm. Um, it's cost me... <laughs> far too much over the years uh, to do this but it's really cool for the corporate scene um because yeah you just being jack sparrow going around having fun getting to say whatever you like and it's it's his cheeky subtleties and it's the subtleties johnny depp's subtleties mm-hmm. in those films they echo the subtleties of like charlie chaplin um mm-hmm. when when he used to do character comedy um and just see and that it goes back to Danny Kay also. It's the effortlessness when it looks like something's not happening um, and it's all in the eyes and it's the nuance. And just if somebody says something that's a little bit saucy, just having that pause of. <laughs> just, just having the tiny little, just these little inflections really change it. And it goes from being, oh, that's a person. And because <laughs> there's nothing worse. And I, I'm friends with loads of people who do the Disney princess uh, mm-hmm. parties and stuff and i work very strongly um with, with one company as well and they're fantastic um Danique and everybody there and there's nothing worse than seeing people jump on ideas mm-hmm. but not put the heart and work in that pe- people like like Danique and people i just mentioned do mm-hmm. uh who really go full out um to give that these experiences because you you end up seeing on facebook or scrolling and getting sent to a page and it's like wendy's just like gone on amazon um, for like 15 quid, she bought an Elsa costume, like, but she's like not hid her hair, and it's just, just because anybody thinks that they're they can, which is nice in one way, you know, it's encouraging people to be creative, which is nice and encouraging them to perform. Um, but certainly with Jack, I wanted to get it spot on. So yeah. instead of just being a guy going around being a little bit camp, I wanted it, I wanted to, like the Jim Carrey thing, deliver it as if Jack Sparrow really was in this situation right now. Um, using modern day references, not knowing where he is. What does that mean? What's this? Hey, all this different stuff. Um, and it was quite nice because I inspired another guy as well, um, a guy called Stuart, um, who's who's known as Swansea Jack Sparrow. Mm-hmm. And uh, he came to see the pantomime. I remember telling him, I had him telling me that on a on a shoot. We did a shoot in 2014, like a zombie movie, and I was mm-hmm. I was directing bits of that. Uh, an incredible stunt man, incredible actor. Um, and he was like, Oh, I dress up as Jack Sparrow too. And I was like, ah, oh, okay, awesome. And he goes, yeah, I saw you, man. And yeah, he just, he's fantastic as well. And just seeing seeing people do things with heart and approaching it as actors and approaching little things like that. You know, especially now being diverse, people have got to do anything they can to get money. But just put the effort in. Don't expect something for free. I can't stand seeing people who feel entitled and, and feel like, oh, well, huh, nobody's given me something. It's just, well, if you put the time and energy into that, then you might um, because you know there's so many people at work who've grafted and grafted and grafted and in every profession but obviously we're just talking about this one now um so yeah i just i like to see people who have worked hard get the goodness at the back at, at the end of it yeah. yeah so with your comedy characters are any of them based on real people so there's elements of gwyn uh that are my dad Okay. The Quinn that oh, I suppose my granddad as well. Um, but yeah, there's this things just isms. I mean, Barry Welsh, it was a huge, huge thing. I don't know if it if it transferred over there. John Sparks, absolute genius. Um, and that he had these Welsh characters, and obviously growing up hearing them, you know, I wanted to give a little nod to that as well. But with Gwyn, he's completely ignorant in the sense of Oh, well, I've said it now. So what? Ah, Jeff, I've said it. It's my opinion. Yeah, don't unfriend me. I don't care. It, it just, he doesn't care. And it's just that element of all of us, which is just like, oh, well. Um, and he, he gets away with quite a lot of risky jokes because of it. And I can say things as him in a woke world. And it's still okay. People will still laugh at it. And it just shows how fickle people are at the moment also. Um, you know, it's keeping up with the Joneses. It's just crowd mob mentality of, oh, we shouldn't be saying that. <laughs> no, you shouldn't be saying that. We hate you. We hate you. Oh, I found it funny. <laughs> ha we all find it funny now. Yeah. It's just, I've got no time for any of that. So just do what you got to do. <laughs> just make stuff for yourself. Make people laugh. Was that your question? It doesn't matter. Who's judging? Hashtag. 
I think the thing is, as well, people have to remember at the end of the day, nobody's forcing you to watch something. So if you don't like it, you don't have to watch it. And I think that's what a lot of people forget a lot of the time. Totally. That's the thing, you know, it's, it's subjective, you know, and that's the beauty of it. Like, that's why there's so many different... I've been very lucky to work in, in many fields within comedy, um, but certainly I find the self-deprecation comedy or being the butt of the joke, but flipping it, the ignorance level, which you've got geniuses like Chris Morris, who have been doing this for obviously the last couple of decades, where when the audience think it's one thing, when they revisit and sit and think about, not to dull down to them, not to patronise and not to make fun of them, but to make them go, ah, yeah. But unfortunately, that's only pockets. There's, a, there's an audience for it, and I, I occasionally post Gwyn and stuff for, for that audience on, on my social media, certainly. Um, but of course, we're in a, a very, very short attention span world at the moment, as you can tell. <laughs> like, they, they, bless you, I've ruined your podcast. <laughs> Because of me, they turn. They, after the first three seconds, they, they turned off. And I, I, I it's nothing to do with you, love. But I, you know what I'm holding now. I've done it. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Yeah. That's visualization for you. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know what I was saying, but it it sounded long. So feel free to edit. <laughs> okay. So, um, is there anybody that you really think like you really want to work with that you haven't worked with yet? Yeah, there are. No, there's. there's oh gosh, there's so many. Um, but in a, in a, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> you. I've stumped you. Yeah. I do <laughs> and different things as well. Mm. Um, you know, I, I would love to, love to, love to, at some point work with somebody like Chris Morris, mm. get an opportunity to kind of just see his work and, and just sit there and collab. That would be like the ultimate, strangely. And, and, but then, you know, it's a shame because all of the ones that I would have really, really, really aspired to have kind of had on that list have mm -hmm. started in the last couple of years also. Um, like that's, that's a, that's a huge, huge, like shame and, and shock to the generation that, that kind of farmed so much talent of like the eighties, nineties and onward um, to have so many of these icons of ours all, all, all go at a similar time. Yeah. Um, I would love to still work with people like Brian Connolly. I'd love to work, work with him. And um, also there's a Jolson link there too. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's people like that. The people who are still my personal heroes. Um, and there's only, there's, there's, a, there's only a few left. So yeah, and I, I, I hope in some capacity I can at least honor them in some degree if I don't ever, yeah. Cool, cool, right. Quick fire round. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so. Tea or coffee? Tea. Sun or rain? Rain. Cats or dogs? Or dogs. Musical or play? Musical. Comedy or tragedy? Comedy. Sweet or savoury? Sweet. Meat or veg? Veg. Yeah. Hugs or kisses? Just, just I quite, I quite like veg. The veg. The veg. All oh, careful. He's in your head. He's not. That was a joke. He's not. I don't need any more rumours. Right? <laughs> Hugs or kisses? Oh, see, I've got a catchphrase within my family um, that we all go, Mac kisses, um, because like one of my stems and st stems, I can't even say that right. One of my stems um, from when I was uh, small was Mac kisses. And I have this sort of like stitch <laughs> kind of voice, which was my sort of come thing through my difficulties and um yeah so kisses definitely okay. yeah night out or night in night in tour or west end run oh tour you know i think a tour I'd, I'd love to do i'd love to do a musical in the west end um as opposed to just just playing it as a comic or, or other other things um that is on my list but this is just something about touring which is you feel the complete you just you feel that the complete thing of being part of the show as as crew as well, especially if they're smaller tours where you've got to like be in the van, move the set. I love those uh, grassroots. Always, always the work and grassroots and the graft of it. Yeah, so it's a family kind of atmosphere as well, isn't it? I think when you're on tour like that as well. Yeah, oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, favorite film? Oh, Kodak. <laughs> um, I wow, I got loads. Oh gosh, I and I don't really watch um, like modern stuff. 
Uh, surprise, surprise. <laughs> uh, so like things like Duck Soup, um, you know, all, Hook is a is a beautiful film, and like the seasons are like Hook at the moment. Uh, <laughs> snow in one day, the next day there's a flower sniffing your groin. Like, who knows what's going? On? <laughs> you are the band. I'm just yeah, no, I, I love Hook and just the music, the, evo- the evoking music of of Hook. Mm. Um, oh gosh, there's a let's just say anything with with Danny Kay, Mark's brothers, uh, or, pe- or people like that in it. Okay, favorite yeah. book. Now I'm because I'm dyslexic and, and quite badly dyslexic, um, so I have to get my scripts for like castings in advance and stuff because I read stuff and I like the, the as, as an actor and as a writer. Like how I mean now again I'm doing it again. How have I blagged this? <laughs> it's just, I'm very lucky to have loads of different editors and, and people with patience. Um, and yeah, just um, what was I saying? Um, dyslexic, and I asked your favorite book. Ah, dyslexic. So yeah, so I never used to read books. Um, I had my mother read to me, and my father read to me. Um, my brother. Um, but yeah, I would always have to have the audio. So I'd have like Stephen Fry audio cassettes of the Harry Potter series, uh, the Famous Five, um, things like that. And yeah, the only the only sort of books I've read are scripts now. Mm-hmm. But just having to kind of check the intent of it because I could be saying it's something completely different. Um, but yeah, I switch off mm. a lot. So that's my biggest thing. I watch so much stuff. I'm like a walking QI and I don't know how I've absorbed it, right? So <laughs> like, you, God bless YouTube in one sense. Um, yeah, like everybody's suddenly professors. Like everybody's got all this like knowledge that they shouldn't have. And uh, yeah, so I've, yeah, I've not really read many books or novels like, like most people. Um, but yeah, certainly I've, I've listened to all your tapes. Um, so what would be your favourite? Ooh, wow! Do you know what I listen to? I listen to loads of stuff. Um, I like falling asleep listening to like Shakespeare uh, being being read and and things like that, um, or things that like tap dance in the mind as you're sort of dazing mm-hmm. and you're like, oh, that's not. And then go just just you know just find it. What does that mean? <laughs> and I wake up the next day, go, no, I shall not. <laughs> Where does that come from? I'm cooking an egg, and just. Yeah, listening to, I like hearing old fashioned voices or, mm-hmm. or with BBC to go, and now it's it here with the lady, da, 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 da. and just hearing the old crispness of, of wax records and the crackling of stuff. Uh, but then again, I listen to like the Ricky Gervais podcast or might listen to like Joe Rogan, um, but, but actually audiobooks. I've listened to quite a lot. Um, a lot of comedians. I'm still very interested in, in comedians' backgrounds, mm-hmm. what makes us tick, uh, why we do certain things, is the patterns um and yeah so a lot of the audio tapes have been biographies of of comedians really okay cool last one ultimate comfort food oh my mum is the best cook in the world um so gosh anything nana pedge cooks (laughs) okay cool (laughs) so thank you very much you've been amazing i think we answered most of the questions (laughs) i don't even know what day it is right now um so, no. <laughs> it's been a pleasure thank you very much for having me on the show and it's, it's lovely to see you yeah you too we'll speak soon Mwah, lots of love Bye. Take-